kitchen, baby, and you know what it means. Jean Marie gon' come around. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, let's start the show. Hey, hair care hotties, it's your girl, G Marie, and welcome to another episode of The Hair Kitchen. Today's episode, we are gonna get into the Met Gala. I know everybody may or may not have seen it when it was racing our TVs and our YouTubes and online, but I have for years wondered why there was no partnership with the designers who create the wardrobe for the Met Gala that the celebrities wear, and the top artists from Naha. And if you aren't familiar with Naha, Naha is the North American Hairdresser Awards ceremony. It's the Oscars of the beauty business. It's the top of the top. It's the cream of the crop of stylists who compete to win the finalists and the winners of the hair industry and they create fabulous hairstyles and what what we're really used to is working with the costume designer or the fashion designer and then we ice the cake with hair and then makeup comes in and does their thing and now nails are a part of it so i don't know what's going on with the fashion industry and the beauty industry and why that isn't a partnership and a thing but I looked at some of the looks that I saw that I liked, but I think they could have been so much better had they had the hair finished. So let's talk about it. When, when you see fabulous gowns and wardrobe and celebrities gracing the red carpet, the Met Gala, the Grammys, where's the hair? And I'm not saying, and I'm not talk, saying anything bad about the hairdressers who are called to do the job, but sometimes there's another level of hairstyling that's not your regular retail, I'm gonna give you a wrap and curl, I'm gonna give you some flexies. It takes it to another level. Those stylists compete in Naha. Those are the stylists who put all their creativity into matching a wardrobe, a a piece of clothing, the makeup artist comes in and they collaborate to create a beautiful finished look. If your hair is pulled back in a ponytail and the ponytail isn't giving aha, then it's, it's not, your hair's not done. So a couple of the publications like Harper's Bazaar, The Hollywood Reporter, In Style had their take on the best style or the top 10 and whose gown was this and whose gown was that. But again, for me, I was like, her gown is everything, but her hair is saying nothing. And for example, I have coming in at number one, this is not my favorite, I'm saving my favorite for last, but number one of the gowns that I reviewed and the hair and what hair I thought would have been a better fit is Kim Kardashian. Now, Mason Margila designs her dress and when i looked at his designs of future and past things that he had done he does these futuristic fairy tale storybook kind of ornate tight cinch waist wide bell skirts he just does some of the most amazing fashions as far as i'm concerned and when i looked at her I was like, this is beautiful. And it's actually three pieces. Everyone was like amazed that her waist looked so small, but he actually dropped the skirt, which then emphasized and made her waist look even smaller because I had the opportunity to watch a Get Ready With Me that Vogue had done with Kim, her hairstylist, and, and Mason, the, the, the fashion designer. And I was like, oh, it wasn't even pulled as tight as we thought. But then they draped the cashmere sweater over her shoulders and completed the look. But that's actually three pieces. The metal skirt is separate from the boudoir, I guess it's called, or the bustier. And then the sweater is draped over her shoulders. And then I was like, okay, and did she run in from shopping? Because why does her hair look like this in the photo where... It just looks down like it was an afterthought. If I could recommend 
her hair, a style to go with what Mars Mason had done, it would have been the woman Galna from Ulta Beauty in West Haven, Connecticut, who was the 2024 finalist for hairstyling, I would have suggested this look right here to go with Kim's wardrobe. If any of you saw Ariana Grande's dress, her dress was giving fantasy, fairy tale, queen of the garden, because the theme was the garden in time. And if you know the story of the garden in time, that's why we saw so many flowers at the Met Gala, so much floral design to go along with the theme. But Ariana Grande had simple romance, simple elegance. It just was just all of the little pleats in the skirt, off the shoulder, the, the fittedness of the bustier, and then the scallop of the scarf with the drop waist. It was beautiful. And again, her hair is pulled back in a ponytail. And, and not a ponytail that's even ornately doing anything fantasy or fancy when it comes to hair. I would have suggested something similar to this photo right here from Teresa Romero, Naha 2023 finalist, master hairstylist. I would have suggested a style like this. It has the vine running through the front, the, the um, bang sculpt the face with a tousled top, like she might've been out in the garden doing something and a gust of wind came along, but her hair still would have been beautiful and finished. I just, I just think this is so, so elegant and would have gone well to not take away from the dress. And then we have Zendaya. Zendaya's dress is made by the same designer who made Kim Kardashian's dress. Again, his, his work tends to cinch in the waist and go from storybook fantasy, steampunk, all of the kind of looks that I really like. But then her hair, I get it. Her dress to me said, bird of paradise meets garden in time, lady butterfly. Why is her hair not giving any of that? Her hair is under a beret with a sheer piece of net and a feather sticking out of it, which, okay, that's great, but could we have put it on top of something like this? The hair by Adrian Gutierrez, Naha winner from 2023, and her hair could have been truly ornate and could have really put the icing on the cake that Marcel had baked, because I just was like, wow, this hair right here is the hair I would have chosen to match with that gown that she's wearing. And then one of my all-time favorite actresses, Demi Moore, she's wearing a Harris Reed gown and her gown to me is Garden of Time meets Bows and Arrows with Hearts. Her, the ornateness of her dress is just over the top, you have this big heart with these arrows coming out of the top of the heart, surrounding it, almost like um, Cupid, if you will, 2024. But then her hair is like an afterthought. It's just straight back behind her shoulders with a middle part. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, what happened? I think the style I would have topped her off with was Carlos Alvarez, 2023 Naha finalist, styling and finishing. This hairstyle is gorgeous. I mean, loops and bounds and height and volume, but still the sleekness around the face. And then the style is behind her so that you still could enjoy the total look and not have it take away from the gown. I just think this would have been a perfect look. I feel like Demi Moore could have pulled it off. She's a beautiful woman. Her hair is black in this photo. Her, her gown is black with the beautiful rose or flower with pink and white in the front. The heart, the big shoulders that the heart creates with the arrows. Again, Cupid 2024. Let's give her hair some finish. Let's ice, put the icing on that cake. And last but not least, Dua Lipa. 
Now, Dua's gown was beautiful. I, I really liked it. Some people were like, what is she even wearing? It looks like she's kind of got on like a swimsuit with some lace that now has a cover-up dropped a little low, but the feather boa draped over her shoulder, the lace gloves, the beautiful hair color, but then the style is just like so undone, so not finished for me as a stylist. I like to see hair really done and have some nice finish to it so that it looks like you just walked out of the salon, not did it yourself. I would have partnered her with Alan Ruiz, Naha Winter 2023 for hair, and it was very dressed. It was beautiful with finger waves, with the red and the black, the hair color could have topped it off. There was beading around it. And then the way the end of the hair sculpts over the shoulder would have worked right in with that boa that she's carrying and just had so much style and finish to it to really seal the deal. So the one clip that we forgot, Tiana Taylor. So I had her dress picked out and her hair and dress for me with the theme of the Met Gala, um, Garden in Time. She has the flowers on. She has the updo that would have possibly been significant to the time of the style of her dress. It looks a little like boudoir. And then I find out that it was actually for her burlesque show. And it just all came together for me. I was like, okay, total look. She had a play on what was called the Gibson Girl. And if you look up Gibson Girl, you'll see where that style came from, the period and how women were dressing. And you can see her dress. She's clearly got the theme of the garden in time because she has the flowers and it's got the floral pattern just placed delicately around the dress, not overkill, and then her hair. And then when you see her with the green backdrop, like the, like she's in the garden and these are like trees behind her, it's several different pictures that I saw and I was like, oh my God, her hair is definitely giving Garden of Time with her dress. It was a total look. I wouldn't change anything. And I was glad to see that there was someone that attended the Met Gala whose dress and hair looked the part. So two thumbs up, Tiana Taylor, you nailed it. So those are just some of the things I would have considered as a stylist working with some of these designers on the wardrobe for these celebrities. I would have said, let's really hit the ball out of the park when it comes to the hair so that it's a happy marriage between the wardrobe, the hair, and the makeup. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed that because I really enjoyed giving you my spin on how the hair could have been. Paul Mitchell's Foaming Pomade is one of my all-time favorite products. I got introduced to this product years ago, probably the mid-80s. I was managing the salon in Landover Mall. For any of you who were in Prince George's County at that time, Landover Mall was one of the all-time popular malls with fountains. It was a beautiful place. Lots of stores, lots of places to shop, lots of places to eat. I don't know if people remember the cookie jar. You could go and get cookies. Roy Rogers was in the mall. And I was right next door as the manager of the hair cuttery in Landover Mall. And we carried the full Paul Mitchell line. It didn't quite look like this back then. The lettering was different. The bottles were a little same shape, but smaller and wider. And Foaming Pomade has always delivered consistently over the years. So I just want to read to you what it says on the back of the bottle. But I actually use foaming pomade in my hair when I want to wear a curly style. And I also use it when I want to wear it smooth, like a wrap and curl or a flat iron style for your short hair clients. Long hair as well, but more of your short sculpted styles where you're going to mold 
the style pomade will deliver each and every time. So it says help help take control of wavy, curly, or unruly hair with this lightweight texture tamer. Smooth out and shine up. So you can use it on naturally curly hair. If your hair is a little unruly, tends to be dry, and you need a styling product that will give you that moisture and softness, Foaming Pomade can become one of your best go-to products. I also, like I said, I like it on a wrap and curl. And on the front, it says anti-frizz. So one, one client asked a question the other day. She said, well, do I need to put it in every day? No, you don't. Probably put it in and re-wet it. And then probably every third day, you might want to shampoo it out and start over if you're not getting the results that you did on day one by day three. So give it a try and see what the results are for you. I hope you like it as much as I do. Welcome to the Hair Kitchen. Let G. Marie take care of your hair. Visit us on Style Seat for appointments or call 443-490-5777. And follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. There's something for everyone in the Hair Kitchen. And this is my new favorite product by Matrix, and it is a wax builder wax spray. So this is an aerosol spray wax spray and I tried it because I was looking for a product that could give me hold without making the hair hard and without building up and being as heavy as some of my other favorite curl waxes and cream presses. So you can spray this and as it says on here for controlling and finishing. So you can spray it on and how I've been using it is you can spray it on and you can flat iron. You can spray it on at the finish for my clients who are natural and I'm trying to make sure that their hair isn't going to puff up and frizz when they walk out into the local humidity. But I don't want their hair to feel hard. This is more for if I'm working with someone who is transitioning and they haven't been wearing their hair smooth or a silk press or a blowout to help their hair to repel some of the humidity in the hotter months in this community. So um, give it a try. I'm liking it so far. It's new for me, but so far the couple of clients that I've used it on, I really like it. So I, I think you should try it and I hope you like it too. So here's another product that I really, really like. It is for the client who has a bit of a dry and itchy scalp, but doesn't want the medicated smell or doesn't want any smell for that matter. And it's Design Essentials Therapeutics Anti-Itch Hair and Scalp Treatment for Dandruff Hair Grooming. And when you open the product, it's clear, so it doesn't have any color. And it just barely has any smell but the most active ingredient in this is the salicylic acid which helps to sloth off the dry scalp and skin that can accumulate for someone who has dry scalp i really like it and i use it very sparingly and i only use it where the client's scalp appears to be itchy or dry i may ask them hey, where does your scalp normally itch? And people will say, oh, my scalp itches here, or it itches here, or it itches here. After you finish blow drying, and after you finish pressing or doing your silk press before your curling iron or whatever iron you finish with, even if it is a flat iron, you can apply this. I do not apply oils and treatments that are for leave-in to the scalp before the press or before a silk press because you don't want them to heat up and cause the client to feel the burning sensation. That is a misnomer that I have seen and heard throughout my career is people don't know when to apply an oil-based product to the scalp. You, and I'm gonna say this never, and I don't use never and always lightly, but you never want to apply any type of oil to the scalp before the blow dry or before the pressing. 
you want to apply it if you're going to curl and you know you're not going to get too close to the scalp and you don't want to disturb your curls after they're set and before you flat iron finish but not any time i watched the stylist i'm going to tell you a short story in the salon she applied a thick based oil based product to a client's scalp and and blow dries with it in it prolongs the blow dry and when she asked me to assist her and help her her client tightened her towel up around her neck as if she was prepared for some very uncomfortable service about to happen and i she was amazed that i didn't burn her the blow dry didn't burn because these products heat up and the hot tools that we have heat them up so you just want to be mindful and not apply oil-based products to the client's scalp before you're ready to finish but if you have someone who has dry scalp this is a go-to anti-itch by design essentials give it a try dudley's total control edge control i'm going to say this is the best edge control on the market and why because it gives you a hold you can smooth ponytails you can lay edges down you can put neck hair up and it holds it like i'm just like almost like a gel it doesn't start to break down how some edge controls you put it on and then before you finish putting it on it starts to get shiny and it looks like it starts to melt and let the hair go it doesn't give you that white crust or build up right where the edge control meets the hair that's not part of the hairline it doesn't have any bad characteristics i really love dudley's edge control and they have consistently kept their formula so that we know we're going to get the results because there's nothing worse than falling in love with the product and it stops working because the manufacturer decides that they're going to change the formula but if you are looking for a really good edge control give dudley's edge control a try i know you I, I, you won't it doesn't disappoint you'll be satisfied so tell me what you think in the comments i would love to hear from you guys about what you saw on met gala and what kind of hair you would have liked to see if any and just what do you think about the looks that i chose for the celebrities who graced the met gala it's the hair kitchen baby and you know what it means g marie gonna come around she gonna really lay it down she gonna tell y'all all about all the things she knows about beauty Industry, everything you need to see, hair color and history, business opportunity. So you better listen up real good. The hair kitchen is in your hood. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, start the show.